Okay. So based on that idea, I want to go back to the garden and I want to talk about the Eitz Hadat. I want to talk about this tree and try to not only just understand what happened there, but also how we can apply it to our lives. Okay. Because we have a big problem is that when we learn stories as kids, we stay with the kid version. So let's go back to that story and look at it from adult eyes. And because especially Chava was, you know, the first firm girl. So, and you know, hashtag firm girl problems, like <laughs> girl got kicked out, right? So us sitting here and eating fruit and trying to rectify this and understand what happened can even be a greater tikkun for what happened there. Okay, great. So we're going to go back into the story. So the story starts out like this. And the serpent was cunning dun 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 more than all the beasts of the field had that Hashem had made and it said to the woman did God indeed say you should not eat of any tree in the garden okay so Rashi's going to tell us two fun facts here okay Rashi is always bringing me the story behind the story okay one is the snake's motive and one is the snake's method okay the snake the Nahash's mo <laughs> motive was he really liked Chava, but like, like liked, okay? Adam and Chava were living in the garden and Adam and Chava were married and Adam and Chava related to each other in a married way in the middle of the garden because they didn't have any shame. And when the snake saw that, he was jealous and he wanted to break them up so he could get with Chava, okay? And his method was to start the conversation with even the most ridiculous comment ever. Of course, God didn't tell them not to eat from any tree, but he was trying to open the conversation with her. So not only is this the first instance of jealousy, this is the first really bad pickup line in history. <laughs> okay? So, and the woman says to the serpent, so she responds to him, okay, because girls have been responding to bad pickup lines since the beginning, and she says, of the fruit of the trees of the garden we can eat, but of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, Hashem said, you shall not eat it, and you shall not touch it, lest you die. Somebody took some poetic license here, because what Hashem actually said was what? Don't eat, don't, eat don't eat it. But there's an extra phrase that Chava put in there, which is don't touch it. Okay, Hashem never said that. He just said not to eat from it. According to most opinions, the person who added that extra special phrase was Adam Arishon. He was the one who heard it from Hashem, and when he passed it over to Chava, he added a little buffer zone. He said don't eat it and don't touch it. And as I really appreciate, one Rob put it this way, he said, <clears throat> the first sin, the most cosmically disastrous event in history was caused by a man underestimating a woman. Let that be a lesson to us all. <laughs> and actually, when Hashem goes and gives the Torah to us, which, by the way, this week's Parsha, he gives it first to the women. And Rabbeinu Bahaya says he realized that when you give it first to the men and expect them to give it over, it doesn't go well. So give it first to the women and you know it's going to go right. Hashtag girl power. Okay. <laughs> so Rashi says here from the Midrash, what happens? So the snake pushes Chava and she bumps into the tree. And then he says to her, you won't die. Right? You were supposed to die if you touched the tree. You didn't die when you touched the tree. If you eat from it, you're not going to die either. Because the Shem knows, and then he tempts her, and he says, On the day you eat from this tree, your eyes will be open, and you will be like angels, knowing the difference between good and bad. Okay. And this is the first major dramatic moment in history. Okay, Imagine the music swirls. Okay, How his eyes lift up. She gazes over, her hand reaches out, right? And she grabs the fruit. The woman saw that the tree was good for food and was a delight to the eyes, and it was good to make one wise, so she took the fruit, and she ate, and she gave it to her husband, and he ate. Now, just a side note, 
Just fun facts. We aren't exactly sure what this fruit that they ate was, but it certainly was not an apple. <laughs> no, it really wasn't. It was totally not an apple. Okay, Rashi says that it was intentionally hidden what kind of fruit it was so as not to shame the plant. So it wouldn't be like every time you walk by the tree, you'd be like, oh, that tree damned us all. Like, right. So we don't want that. So we keep it secret which fruit it was. There's some opinions it was a fig tree. Some opinions it was a grapevine. Okay, and she made wine. Some say it was an etrog tree. Some say it was even a stalk of wheat. Everyone tree also. Hmm? I mean, everyone else is like you. Right. So it could be any of these different things, but it was totally not an apple. Okay. The reason that it was an apple, by the way, is based on a Latin pun. Okay, when Jerome translated the Bible into Latin, there's this really funny pun he thought he would make because the word malus means both bad, like malo in Spanish, right? Okay, <laughs> means both bad and apple. So he called it the bad apple. <laughs> Woo, go pun Jerome. Okay, but it really legit, it wasn't an apple. Okay. So that's the whole story. That's it. Hava ate the fruit. She gave the fruit to Adam, and we broke the rules. Bam. According to Rob Dessler, which is based on the Nefesh Chaim, something fundamentally changed in that moment that they ate the fruit. Okay, there was an immediate consequence. What it was is that tree was called the Eitz Hadat Tov the Ra. The gotten tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but up until this point, there was no good or evil. Good and evil didn't exist. What existed in the garden before the tree, before they ate, was truth and <clears throat> falsehood. Emet and Sheker. But good and bad didn't exist. Because good and bad are a point of view. Truth and Sheker are eternal truths. So yes, when Chava ate from that tree, all of the sudden, good and bad started to exist. And what Rav Dessler also explains is at that moment, something else changed, which is the location of our Yetzir Hara. Before, the Yetzir Hara, the evil inclination, was outside as Mr. Snake. After we ate, it became internalized. It became the voice in your head. In fact, Rob Dessler says you can always know when it's the Yetzir Hara speaking to you from how the Yetzir Hara speaks. The Yetzir Hara always speaks in the first person. I'm too tired. I can't do this. I'm not good enough. I won't make it. You hear the I, it's the Yetzir Hara. And but... The world is a fair place. So as much as there's a Yetzir Hara, there's an evil inclination. There's also an inclination for good. And that speaks to us in the voice of you. You can do it. You are strong. You are capable. In my head, it's like, go, Ayala, you can do it. Don't worry, right? It's like, I'm too tired. No, you're not. You're awesome, right? Those are the voices in our heads. Okay, so what changed at that tree at that moment was our dot, right? It was the tree of knowledge. So our dot, our knowledge changed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to a lot deeper place, okay? This is based on a parish on the Dera Hashem, which was written by Rav Baum. Okay, dot is knowledge, okay? Dot is knowledge. Yeah. Ani loya dot. Mm -hmm. Ani dot. Okay, great. So what it is, is on a deeper level, dot is our koach hachibur, is our way of connecting to the world and the reality around us. Through dot, we perceive our world. Through dot, we interact with our world. Okay? It helps us connect to both the physical reality and also our spiritual reality is through our dot. It is also our Tselem Elohim. Man was made in the image of God. Yes? Yes? Okay. And when I say man, I don't mean man. I mean mankind. <coughs> right? Because originally Adam and Chava were recreated with both men and women, and they were stuck together. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Two faces, and then they got divided. Okay? Yeah? Cool beans. Great. Okay. 
So our Tselem Elohim is our dot. Through our dot, that's how we change the world, and that's how we're similar to God, right? When we interact with our world and we change our world and we create things, that's how we're similar to God. <clears throat> Humanity forms this world, and dot is the part of the person that helps you decide what you're doing. Yeah? It's not only where we connect to our world, it's also where we connect to our creator. So most people think that dot is just sort of this like window, right? Where you look at, understand the world around you. And it's just like this passive thing, like, oh, okay. I look, I understand what I'm looking at. I look, I understand what I'm looking at. But that's not true. See, because since the moment that we have that tree, there's such a thing as dot ra and dot tov. There is good knowledge and there is bad knowledge. Okay, so what's bad knowledge and what's Good dot, okay. Good dot, and hold on, this is the key point. Here we go, ready? Good dot is knowing how you connect to everything around you, how you connect to a Shem, and that everything around you is a Shem connecting to you. Everything around you, everything that comes through the window is actually a message from Hashem to you. Is your creator connecting to you? He is putting things in your window as a message. And that message obligates you to act. When we connect to our physical reality or our spiritual reality through our dot, that is our Tselem Elohim, but that is also our God reaching out to us to connect. So what's dot ra, if that's dot to, realizing that everything is a message from God, dot ra is passive knowledge. Perceiving things, but not understanding that it's coming from Hashem, not understanding that it's a message to you from Hashem, and not getting the message, or getting the message and refusing to act on it. Refusing to make a connection between the knowledge you just have and your reality. As soon as we know something, we immediately have to decide for ourselves, is this an important thing and do I have to do anything with it? And if we choose not to make that decision, it's the same as saying no. Think about it. How much passive knowledge do you get a day? Our generation is the most passive receivers of knowledge that have ever existed. You used to have to go to the library, y'all. Remember back in the dark ages when you had to like get a book? <laughs> and you like had to wait a while before you knew things, before there was like Wikipedia and you could be like, what is the capital of Bolivia? Right? <laughs> right? Like imagine life before this. For those of you who can't, allow me from you know the dark ages to tell you there used to be effort. We live in a world of completely passive knowledge. You gain information all the time and you make sure that it never affects you. Oh, maybe I'll like it. Oh, maybe I'll share it. Everything that comes through the window of your life is a Shem sending you a message <clears throat> and expecting you to act on it. Is dot rock. That tov is using what comes through that window and acting on it. Okay, now I'm going to take this even darker, even deeper. Y'all ready? Wait for it. The Yetzer Hara is in our dot. That makes sense, right? I told you it's the voices in your head, right? It's inside our dot. And the main job is the Yetzer Hara is to act on our dot, is to cloud things up, right? To make things confusing, to make things seem like they're one thing and they're actually another, okay? It's a shadow game. So here's the secret. Ready? Hidden inside the word Yetzer Hara is the truth about it. Yetzer Hara is related grammatically to another word, Yatsar, to create. Yetzer and Yatsar are the same word, different vowels. So when you have a Yetzer Hara, that's when you're Yatzer Hara. 
when you fall into your Yetzir Hara, when you fall into Das Ra, when you act according to a Yetzir Hara, you are actually creating evil in our world. And when you follow the Yetzir Hato, you are actually Yatzir Tov. You are creating good in our world. The messages that are coming from Hashem, if we miss them, it's a Ra. He's sitting there and he's sending us WhatsApps all the time, guys. All the time. Do, 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 do. Hi, it's God. I'd like you to know something about your spiritual situation. Hi, it's God. This would be important for you to understand. Hi, it's God. I put you on the earth to deal with the following thing. Please go make a tikkun over there. Do, 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 And when we miss the message, we are Yatzer Ra. We are creating evil in our world. Because we miss the opportunity to yatser tov, to create good in our world. When we're in a good place with our dot, we get the messages from Hashem loud and clear. You're like, I just missed four buses in a row and I'm sitting at the same bus stop. Clearly, I need to reference what I'm doing. Right? My phone imploded for the fifth time this month. Clearly, I need to reference what I'm doing. This is the third person who's come up and asked me for advice today. Clearly something's going on here. These are all messages from Hashem. There are no coincidences. We don't believe in that. Last week's Parsha Amalek, right? It's all Mikra. It's all coincidence. We're on the opposite. Rearrange those letters. It's Rock Me Hashem. There's no coincidence. Everything that's happening, everything that's coming through your window is a message from God. He's trying to speak to you. He's trying to get at you through your dot. And he wants you to hear him. And he wants you to do something with it. Look at Adam and Chava. They had the tree in front of them. The tree was a message. Just don't do this one thing. And they did. And it had immediate consequences. It was Yatzer Ra. It brought evil into our world. But if you look really, really closely, when we get to the end of that chapter and it has all those curses, right? You've heard the curse of Chava, right? The curse of Eve. It's not there. <clears throat> Hashem never cursed her. He curses the snake and he curses the ground. But Adam and Eve, he doesn't curse. The word curse is not there. What's there is consequence. You acted in a certain way, and there are consequences to the actions. You yatsered something. You created something through the decisions that you made. But it's not that I'm cursing you. It's a consequence. A temporary one. Only for this game. Only up until Mashiach. And trust me, every woman in this room is like, yes, Mashiach now, right? <laughs> Especially if you've had kids. Oh my gosh, Mashiach now, no more childbirth pain. Yes. Right? Like... It created evil when they missed the message. <clears throat> we live in a generation where you can get truth to slap you upside face and you don't do anything with it. Dude, that's totally true, yeah. <laughs> I really, I need to stop eating this. It's terrible for me. We live in a world of passive. We live in a world where we'll know something is completely true and it doesn't change us anymore. We're living in the hands of the Yetzir Hara. He's like, just don't worry about it. You're, the Yetzir Hara isn't actually out there being like, you should totally go to Tel Aviv and do terrible things. No, the Yetzir Hara just tells you, just don't get off your couch. Stay in the status quo. That's the Yetzir Hara's like drum, constantly banging. Stay in the status quo, stay in the status quo. If I knew High School Musical, I would sing that song right now, but I don't, okay? But, but you all should sing it in your head right now, okay, great? That's the Yetzir Hara is blaring in your head, just don't grow, just don't change, okay? Stay in the status quo. What I'm telling you is the truth. Don't look any deeper, and definitely don't get any messages from God here, okay? Because if you do... If you actually listen to what Hashem's trying to tell you, if you actually see that everything that came through your window is from him, if you listen to that Yetzer Tov, oh my gosh, you're going to Yatzer Tov. And I'm going to be out of a job. But secretly, that's the Yetzer Hara's greatest desire. It's for you to beat him at his own game. 
we have the opportunity to make tikkun in our world all the time. There are constantly things coming across from us. Hashem put you, every single person in this room, and every single person who's hearing this, in this world to do something. Mm -hmm. And he is constantly WhatsApping you what you need to be doing, but you've got to open up your eyes, open up your ears, and look at what's coming across the window. There is still MS in this world. It's not all Shekhar. But you got to dig through all of it. And remember that that dot that you have is supposed to connect you back. Open your eyes, clean the window, look through, and let's make some tikkun. Let's yatzer ra. Like, ooh, hasta halila. Let's yatzer to. <laughs> let's make good things. No, halila. Let's make really good things. Let's start by making some brachas on some more fruit. Amen. Have a great day. Amen.